Ebullient greetings. I'm your host, Jackie Bird of Jackie Bird Spiritual Wellness, your guide to stress and anxiety relief, mindfulness, awareness, self-care, self-love, and personal growth. Welcome and thank you for joining me as we roll with peace in mind. Hey everyone, I hope you're well. I have to tell you about the reviews for my book, 28 Daily Thoughts and Mantras for Mindfulness, Keys for Stress Relief and Personal Growth. People are raving, and I mean, they're writing paragraphs about this. One review. I had heard about Jackie Burr's 28 Daily Thoughts and Mantras for Mindfulness workbook about mindfulness and spirituality, but like my usual habit, I was dragging my heels to actually do anything about it. That is, until things got real bad. I was sort of spiraling, caught in the grip of anxiety with a side order of depression. I ordered Jackie's book and it arrived quickly. My concern that I would be overwhelmed with yet one more task on my to-do list was put at ease when I read the first few pages. Jackie breaks down her words of wisdom in bite-sized, easy to adopt and digest pieces. Having simple instructions with easy to manage suggestions is really important to me because so much of my anxiety comes from being overwhelmed with responsibility and pressure from bosses and obligations. Feels good to take a few minutes of the day to focus on her suggestions and mantras. I didn't realize it at first, but even just a little bit of mindfulness Slowing down a little bit, stopping to breathe, goes a long way. Very grateful for her warm and down-to-earth writing style. Thank you so much, Judy. I appreciate that review. One more from Olga Lynn. She says, imagine a beautiful printed guide to aid you in the relief of anxiety, a book that adds a thoughtful focus to each day. 28 Daily Thoughts and Mantras for Mindfulness by Jackie Bird is that guide. I first work through the book as the meditations, visualizations, and exercises are presented over a period of 28 days. I've returned to the book since, sometimes randomly and sometimes returning to a favorite section. The images are calming and the words are full of wisdom, yet never preachy. I like to keep the book handy, but not just as a reference. I like the gentle challenges and find them helpful in centering myself, especially on stormy, hectic days. Thank you, OJ. I appreciate that. So guys, what are you waiting for? Get your copy of 28 Daily Thoughts and Mantras for Mindfulness, Keys for Stress Relief and Personal Growth on my website. The link is in the show description. Today's riff is no regrets when things are not meant to be. Early in the morning, when I was in between awake and not wanting to get up, a recollection flowed to me. It was of something I wanted so badly, but the variables in motion relegated me to a different, somewhat mortifying position. At least that's what it felt like at the time for a long time. Not only did I want this job very badly, but it seemed pretty certain that I would get it. I was in direct succession. Next in line, matter of fact, I did have it. For one day, nah, nah, nah. I think it was one, no, I think it was an hour, maybe two. It's funny how this memory showed up. I was thinking about something seemingly unrelated. Someone I knew about someone I knew, but never met. But he was the main variable of the variables in motion. Why he came to mind along with the memory of this event, I am certain was in reminder of a lesson of wisdom gained. The phone call came out of left field. I'm minding my business. Do, 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 do. The CEO and artistic director of the company called to hire me for a spot. 
I had hoped to get eventually. I knew that it would be a long shot. It would be many years before I could po I would possibly get this opportunity. But here it is. I'm on the phone. I hear the words. And I'm like, yes, yes. Now, the person I was to replace had suffered an injury right before the auditions for this major project. And I was an emergency call to save the day. Hey, I wasn't mad at it. It's okay. And I was excited. I was sorry that it came at the person's misfortune, but it was an incredible opportunity. Plus, I would spend months in a country I loved. I had been elevated from being a guest choreographer, you know, I'd come in for a project or two, mainly to do workshops for the school. I had been elevated to director choreographer of a beloved, wildly popular recurring project. Actually, it was a huge annual prestigious event. Yeah, but, okay. After the phone call, I began to plan, I began to plot. And a couple of hours later, eh, if it even was that much, I get the call that unbeknownst to the person hiring me, okay, that's the artistic director and CEO of the company, the guy I was to replace had tapped another person to fill his slot. So brother man gets hurt. He calls up somebody he knows, yo, come do this gig. And the CEO didn't know this and had offered the job to me. So, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. The artistic director and CEO felt an obligation to honor this. <sighs> to make matters worse, the person that will be actually replacing the director choreographer, you following me? The replacement director choreographer could not be there for the auditions because he had a conflict. So not only do I lose the gig, I am asked, oh, but could you come and do the auditions? Could you come and run the auditions for the show? That means I had to sit and choreograph it and go down there and run the auditions. But I wouldn't get to choose who the people were. That was going to be up to the replacement director choreographer. So Brother Man would be sitting wherever he was looking at the videos of the auditioners. Oh! <laughs> it was a bummer, bummer, big time. I mean, I was devastated. I was offered the meal, but only left with the crumbs. And to make matters even worse or worse or worse, when uh, the artistic director, uh, the artistic director CEO had come to New York to meet this replacement person, I was asked to be in the meeting. And the person was rude to me. Rude to me, okay? I was like, ah, ah, ah. Okay, but yeah, I did the auditions. I mean, I was not going to miss an opportunity to be in that country at all. So if that's what I could get, that's what I get. But I was, I was really bummed. I was bummed. I mean, it was painful to the ego. Though, I got to revisit a place and see people that I adore. And deep down, I was filled with regret and hurt. I'm telling you. I was hurt and I was, it was tinged with anger. You know, what would it have meant for my career, for my life at that time, at that time? What opportunities were waiting to be birthed as a result of having that position? These were some of the thoughts I played host to and none of them were joyful and uplifting, okay? It just was like misery, piling on top of misery, on top of misery. But that's what happens with negative thoughts. It just draws more. You just spin, 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 spin. Uh, you know, of course, that job would have taken me down a completely different path. But that path would have been short-lived. That's the thing about hindsight, right? The path would have been short-lived in the long run. That's right. Variables, things that are not within your control. Variables that were invisible to me at the time. 
invisible and so sadly tragic as the beloved artistic director and CEO who was my darling, darling friend. We used to call each other soulmates. I love this person so dearly. She died suddenly a few years later. That path for me would have been short-lived. As it was, I haven't been back down there to teach because everything changed. The path I am on now is the right one in that it is fulfilling, enlightening, joyful, and it allows me to express more who I truly am and the one that I am becoming. So that's the thing. When we feel like there's stuff we didn't get, we should have gotten it, we wanted it, and we didn't get it, and oh, 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 you kind of are losing sight of what lessons are in there. And if you turn your focus in that direction, you'll understand that stuff sometimes just ain't for you. And you know, what do they say? Hindsight is twenty twenty. But uh, yeah, it's all hindsight now. I know this. But, and what good do the regrets do? It's not one thing in the scenario change as a result of my having them. The results were still the results. And I was just more miserable as a result of having these regrets. You know how we don't get something we really, really want. We can wallow in the emotions and feelings that dredge up. How we can moan, groan, and sometimes cry in the not having of that thing, that situation, a person. Oh God, how many times did I cry because some dude dumped me? Ugh. At the time, it may seem like the end of the world. Yeah. Something we can walk with regret for quite some time. What if this, that, or the other had happened? What if it had come through? What would life be like now? Those thoughts fill our being with regret, with the what is, how comes, etc. And it's really not the best way to use your time and your energy. Regret as a verb is defined as to feel sad, repentant, or disappointed over something that has happened or been done, especially a loss or missed opportunity. As a noun, the definition is a feeling of sadness, repentance, or disappointment over something that has happened or been done. But in the end, regret is just an empty feeling. It's devoid of the higher frequencies we want to vibrate on. So if you're having regrets about something, really try to focus yourself or pivot in another direction in terms of what is working in your life. What are the things that you would like to manifest in your life? Turn your focus there, not on what didn't happen or what should have happened. Oh. In reminder, here's some quotes to consider when it comes to regret. Here's a pretty famous one from the author Kurt Vonnegut. Of all the words of mice and men, the saddest are it might have been, unquote. Quote, the feelings that hurt most, the emotions that sting most, are those that are absurd. The longing for impossible things precisely because they are impossible. Nostalgia for what never was, the desire for what could have been, regret over not being someone else, dissatisfaction with the world's existence. All these half-tones of the soul's consciousness create in us a painful landscape, an eternal sunset of what we are. Woo, that's deep. That's for Fernando Pessoa. Mm, deep, 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 deep. Another quote. The only calibration that counts is how much heart people invest, how much do they ignore their fears of being hurt or caught out or humiliated. And the only thing people regret is that they didn't live boldly enough, that they didn't invest enough heart, didn't love enough. Nothing else really counts at all. End quote. That's Ted Hughes, the poet. So in other words, you know, my understanding is toward the end of our time existence here, you're not so much thinking about the things that didn't happen, but you're thinking about maybe not living as boldly, maybe not taking as many chances and risks, maybe wallowing and spending your time in a place that you could not control. So live, my friends, live, 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 live with joy 
And if you're in a really jacked up position right now in place, plot your exit strategy. How do you move from where you are into the thing that you want? Another quote for you. Don't waste your time in anger, regrets, worries, and grudges. Life is too short to be unhappy. That's Roy T. Bennett, and he's a writer. And I say life is to be lived. Live it with as much gusto and joy as you can. Next quote. We all make mistakes, have struggles, and even regret things in our past. But you are not your mistakes. You are not your struggles. And you are here now with the power to shape your day and your future. That's Steve Maraboli. He's a writer. It's really, like I said, not the best way to use your time and your energy. Living in regret. Regret stays in our airspace until we acknowledge its existence in our minds and let it go. Having the regret is not the issue. Keeping the regret is. Free yourself and live regret-free. Just live. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that the episode was useful and inspiring to you. And why not show your love if you enjoyed this episode on my Venmo. That's at Jackie Bird Spiritual Wellness. I really would appreciate it. And remember my book, 28 Daily Thoughts and Mantras for Mindfulness, Keys for Stress Relief and Personal Growth. You can get that on my website. The link is in the show description. Also consider me for guided meditation. I create custom audio if you want something that's specific to you. My guided meditation sessions are in person and virtual. So wherever you are in the world, you can work with me and we can get to the bottom of your stress and anxiety and help you lift out of depression. I have music on my website. I create music for meditation, music for sleep, because a lot of us have so much trouble with that. And my modal visions. Now, my modal visions are handmade creations. They're wall hangings to imbue your home with good vibes and a beautiful design. So check that out. That's also on my website. In the meantime, remember to roll with peace in mind.